So our next speaker is Dr. Joe Salerno. Joe is the head of our, he's academic VP here at the Mises Institute, a longtime tenured professor at Pace University in Manhattan. Um, he's a very well-known expert on money. He's written books, many, many articles on it. And for those of you who know the name Murray Rothbard, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date us all a little bit, but Joe actually knew and worked with Murray Rothbard before he died. And uh, Joe is going to speak today about hyperinflation. But I will say this about Joe Salerno is that when he gets tired of Manhattan and New Yorkers and ice and cold, um, he comes down and spends half of his year or so in Auburn. So we're very happy to have him. And uh, he's going to speak, I guess, on the topic of hyperinflation. Thanks, Joe. I'm glad to be here today uh, to discuss hyperinflation, which is one of the most interesting topics in the area of money. It's, it's known as a, a natural experiment, meaning that it's a, an extreme and, and um, spectacular event that can actually illustrate a theory. You can actually see it going on in history, um, see how the theory is working. So um, let me just start with hyperinflation. It means extreme inflation, obviously. Uh, I want to just mention very quickly what, what, we are, what we mean by the value of money. Okay, So when the prices of goods are at a certain level, a dollar per Coke, $10 for pizza, $100 per iPod, and so on, that implies a certain uh, value of money. So in other words, if a Coke is a dollar, that means that one Coke can purchase a dollar, or, or that a dollar can purchase a Coke. Uh, the purchasing power of a dollar in terms of pizzas, if pizzas are $10 a pizza, is, is one-tenth of a pizza. Okay, If prices go up, the value of money goes down. So when the prices of, of all these things double, when they go from $1 to $2 per Coke or um, $10 to $20 per pizza, notice that the value of money is now less. So a dollar can buy you either a half a can of Coke now instead of a full can of Coke, one twentieth of a pizza instead of one tenth of a pizza. So what we say is that inflation leads to a shrinking of the dollar. That's what it means, that each dollar's purchasing power is now less. Each now buys less of a particular type of good. Okay. Well, what is inflation? <clears throat> it's an increase in the supply of money. That was the older definition up until about the 1930s, and certainly in the 19th century. But today's definition is that's a general and sustained increase in prices or the price level. Now, I prefer the older definition. I think it's more useful. Um, but we'll use the modern definition in, in, this, in this lecture, because that's the one that, that are, is used in most textbooks and in the media and so on. So what is the cause of inflation in the modern sense? That is, what is the cause of a general and sustained increase in prices? And the primary cause is the fact that there's an increase in the money supply that the total number of dollars in your pockets, purses, wallets, in your cookie jars, on your floorboards, wherever you put it, um, plus the total amount of dollars in your checking accounts and other readily accessible accounts at banks is the money supply. Okay, So it's an increase in that that brings about the phenomenon that we know as inflation. So remember, inflation means rising prices, but it also means, and more accurately, a fall in the value of money, a depreciation of money. So let's see, let, let's see how that, that might work. We have, we have something that Murray Rothbard used to call the Angel Gabriel model. So let's say you have a benevolent uh, um, angel, but uh, he's, he's economically benighted. He doesn't know anything about economics. Um, and so he notices that every time someone gets an increase in their income, if they get a raise or if they win a lottery, whenever they have more paper dollars, they live better. They can buy more goods and services. So he thinks, well, if this is true for one person, let me benefit humanity by doubling everybody's money holdings, the money that they, they have in their, their checking accounts, the money that they have in their wallets and so on. So the next day, everybody wakes up, okay, and everyone feels wealthier. Everyone has twice the amount of money they had the day before. Okay. Um, and what do they do? They rush out to spend the extra money. Okay, because you only need so many dollars to hold for any period of time to make the transactions that you usually make. Anything more than that is extra or excess money that you can spend right away, um, and, and it's burning a hole in your pocket, as the old saying goes. So you can spend it on things that you wouldn't have normally purchased before. 
That's the immediate effect. But the later effect is the quantity of goods have not increased. Okay? The amount of iPods, the, 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 the number of automobiles, the amount of restaurant meals, all of those things are the same overnight. The angel hasn't thought to increase any of those. So what happens is people rush out to spend, spend that, that new money, that extra money. Prices rise. There's, there's more money now um, demanding the same quantity of goods, and that pushes prices up. So this is simply a supply and demand explanation applied to money. An increase in supply of any good, and money is simply another good in the economy. Um, if the demand is unchanged, and people haven't changed their preferences for how, how many dollars they want to hold over the course of, 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 of the week or the, the pay period, that extra money then loses value, okay? It goes down in value. Just as if we doubled the, 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 uh, the, the number of cars in the U.S. economy tomorrow, you could be pretty sure that, that prices would plummet, okay? Prices would go down. Uh, and we, we see this, of course, as um, the technological goods have increased. Uh, for example, uh, uh, HDTVs um, used to be three to $5,000 in 2005, and now you can get one for 500. The reason for that is that the supply has increased so much, okay? Now, when the supply of goods and services increase, uh, those things satisfy human wants, and therefore, that benefits humanity. But the angel did not benefit humanity. The angel created inflation, okay? So let me summarize that, the inflation adjustment process. Uh, so an increase in the money supply will cause people to spend or lend the extra money, and if they lend it, the person who is receiving it uh, will spend it. They don't want to pay interest and just hold the money. So that new money is spent. It increases the demand for goods. Everybody rushes out and spends it on goods, and that drives prices up, which inversely forces the, the value of money downward. Um, and and in, in symbols, the money supply goes up, leads to an increase in demand for goods, leads to an increase in, in the price level, and causes a fall in the purchasing power of money. Okay. So in today's world, really, who prints money? The only institution legally permitted to print money is a central bank. In the US, that's the Federal Reserve. Um, it costs about four cents to print a dollar bill, whether it's a $100 bill, a $50 bill, $25 bill. No, there are no $25 bills. $20 bill, $10 bill, okay. Okay, wake up. Um, all right, so, so there's Ben Bernanke at work causing inflation, cranking it out, okay? But that's not really how the Fed increases the money supply or any other central bank. Uh, they don't really print new money. They create it in cyberspace by buying government bonds and paying for them by creating reserves in the bank's accounts at the Fed. And, and that's simply just a credit to their reserve accounts. And they're called open market operations. So you can see the open market operation right over here. The central bank creates dollars out of thin air, okay? They buy bonds from the banks. They don't actually even send a check to the banks anymore. All they do is they, with a few keystrokes, add, let's say they're buying a million dollars in bonds from a bank. They just add a million dollars. They credit a million dollars to the bank's account. The bank, they now tell the bank, you have no more money uh, to lend out. You have more reserves. So what does the bank do? The bank then lend, lowers interest rates and lends the money out, okay, by creating che more checking accounts. And then when people get those checking accounts, the individuals and companies spend them, that's what causes inflation. Okay, so um, there's a couple of guys, they just have their, their um, BAs in economics. These are the guys that are working at the open market um, operations desk, uh, creating money between nine, uh, right now, it used to be that $85 billion per month was created through the quantitative easing program. That was cut to $65 billion a few months ago, and now the Fed has cut it to $55 billion per month of new money being created. And these guys are doing it via computers. That is, they're buying bonds and creating reserves online. And that's at the New York Fed, about three blocks from my office. I'm going to take a walk down there and, have, and talk to them. Um, <laughs> So hyperinflation is generally defined as inflation exceeding 50% per month. That is, in two months, prices are doubling, or more than doubling. Um, rapid growth in the money supply always causes hyperinflation. Generally, the government set the stage, they don't cause it, but they set the stage for hyperinflation by spending much more than they're taking in, in tax revenues. And, and then financing that extra spending by borrowing new money from the central banks. That's how it gets in circulation. Uh, the, uh, very recently, we've had, we had a huge inflation in Zimbabwe. Um, there were large government deficits, and uh, they borrowed money from the banks that, who created it. Um, 
So in, in August 2007, one Zimbabwe dollar, that was their currency, could buy a, a US dollar, okay? Um, I'm sorry, 245 Zimbabwe dollars bought as much goods and services as one US dollar, okay? But then notice, as the government printed more and more money, um, how many Zimbabwe dollars it took to purchase a US dollar, okay? So in May, it's 207 million. In, in June, it's, it's four and a half billion. It's 26 billion Zimbabwean dollars to buy, uh, that, that is now equal to, to how much a, a, a single US dollar can buy. Um, and then it goes up to 37 um, a million. And then they, they just took zeros off, okay. Uh, but they kept deflating after that, okay. Um, and this is a sign that was uh, in Zimbabwe. Toilet paper only to be used in this toilet, no cardboard, no cloth, no Zim dollars. No newspapers, okay? By, by the end, it was worth literally nothing. So I have some neat pictures to show you uh, of the Zimbabwean hyperinflation. And um, let's get the camera here. Because as they say, pictures are worth, uh, well, in this case, a trillion words. Um, okay, so let me just tighten that up. So they introduced a $200,000 note, which um, was equal to, two, to 10 cents, okay? So kids were just carrying around to buy candy and stuff. Okay. Uh, they introduced the $500,000 note as, as it, it continued. Then a $750,000 note. And of course, as prices continue to skyrocket, um, they introduced a $10 million note, okay. uh, which was equal to, a $10 bill was 10 times more than the $10 million, bill, uh, $10 million note. So in other words, a $10 million note at that point could only buy about $1 worth of goods, one US dollar worth of goods. Here's a kid just going to the store, hanging out in the corner. <laughs> Pretty cool. This is equal to two, this $65 trillion of Zimbabwean notes in this pile is worth, um, uh, is worth 2,000 US dollars. Here's a guy going to the grocery store. Okay. This mountain of cash is worth um, $100. That mountain of cash is worth $100. So finally, instead of having people carry all that cash around, they, they introduce a $250 million bill, uh, or actually a, a $500, um, no, a $50 million bill, excuse me, and then a $250. Okay. Now, this shirt on that rack plus three billion dollars. Okay, so the cap is at the top, so plus three billion dollars. Here's a five hundred million dollar bill that was introduced. Here's a hundred billion dollar bill. Hundred billion. Here's what it can buy: three eggs. This guy is in a restaurant. And here's a restaurant bill in Zim dollars. $1,243,255,000. And uh, for, for that meal. And it didn't look like it was much. What was it? One dinner, one mineral water. OK, and I, but it kept going up. And um, eventually, the currency broke down. Here's where they took the zeros off. They just, just arbitrarily took zeros off. Okay. And we can keep going with those, but um, I, want, I have a few minutes left, so I want to talk about the German hyperinflation, which was even worse. Um, the German hyperinflation uh, came about uh, after World War One. Let me just, and I have a, and I'll give you an idea of what prices were like. This is the price of newspapers. 
in Germany. And then I have a few pictures. Okay, so, so it started off that the um, price of a newspaper was a third of a Deutsche Mark, a third of a mark in Germany in January of 1921. That's after a huge inflation that went on from 1914 to pay for the, the war, World War I. Um, but then it tripled, the price of this paper tripled, okay, in a little more than a year. Then in October, from May to October, it went up eight times. So that's like if, if the price of a car today is $20,000, it's $160,000 five months from now, okay? And then, then prices of a newspaper went from eight marks to 100, um, and from, from February to September, number of months went to 1,000, then to 2,000 in one month, then in 15 days it went to $20,000, so the newspaper was 2,000 marks at the beginning of the month, 20,000 uh, in the middle, 1 million at the end of the month, let me put that up so you can see it, 15 million two weeks later, and then 70 million, okay? At that point, the, the German government stopped the inflation, called in the notes. For every one trillion marks you had, you got one new mark, which they claim was backed up by land. Okay. Um, and then just a few pictures, and then I want to show you a couple of notes. Now, you heard the, the, the stories, that um, number of stories. One is that when women went to the um, grocery stores, they would take laundry baskets full of mark notes, but they couldn't fit them in the grocery store, so they would leave them out in the front. Thieves would come by, dump out the, the notes, and take the laundry baskets, because the laundry basket was worth more than the notes that they contained, okay? And, and, and you'd see workers with them um, going to uh, uh, different shops with, with wheelbarrows full of notes. So here's, here are those women. They're the laundry baskets. Okay. Instead of toys, it was cheaper to play with, make blocks out of mark notes. It's played with them and stuff. Um, it was cheaper, instead of buying Wood, it was cheaper to keep warm by putting marks in your, in your uh, furnace, okay? Um, the, uh, so the government had taken over all the printing pla plants in Germany um, by, by the, towards the end of the inflation. Prices were, rising. prices were rising faster than the money supply was rising because people were expecting prices to rise faster in the future. So store owners were, were raising prices now in anticipation of higher prices in the future. But if that's the case, that means people don't have enough money to pay those higher prices, even though there are you know, trillions of dollars in the economy. Okay. Uh, so the, go the government took over all the printing plants and they, and they kept saying, look, we're not, it's not us, we're, we're simply trying to print the money to keep up with the prices that are rising faster than money. But they set the whole process up themselves by beginning the inflation. And at the end, banks, when you deposited money, they didn't even count the notes, because they were all $1 trillion notes, whatever they were. They just weighed them, okay? And then they, 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 they deposited them. Here is a, a, an actual German note. It used to be a one, th you, see, you can see in the corner, it's kind of, it's not bright, but it's a 1,000 mark note right there. When it was turned into the banks, that says ein milliard, okay? Milliard is a billion. So all they did at the end, they, they didn't have enough paper to print more notes. They used the old notes and they stamped, they just made the denominations higher, okay? So can that happen today in the US? Well, having shown you that um, money can be created almost costlessly in cyberspace, yeah, I mean, it could, it could happen. Will it happen? Hopefully not. I mean, but, but, but the cost of preventing such an inflation is at some point to have, to stop increasing the money supply and to simply um, allow a recession to take place. Because there's been so many um, distortions in the economy and misallocations of resources uh, as a result of the inflation that we have had that it's going to require a recession to, to correct all, all of, of these mistakes that have been made. Thank you.